Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to cover step disturbance rejection and also step tracking. And the way that we'll introduce all this is by using a rather generic block diagram. And what I'll do is just put in some letters in here. Call this one D. Maybe that's our controller. G is our plant. Our output is Y. And in the feedback path, we have some other transfer function, L. And I have a couple different inputs R, which is my reference input, and W, which is the disturbance input. Very different inputs. Basically, what R is, is what I would like my Y to do. So for instance, if I were to set my r to a unit step, so here's r of t, ideally what I would like y to do, well I'd like it to jump right up to r, but eventually, certainly in steady state, I'd like it to get up to r. So maybe it jumps up a little bit and goes like so. So in red I have my output y. That would be wonderful. Now. Our, the thing that's of interest to us for this discussion is what happens in steady state. Now we can always define the error as being the reference minus the output y. And in steady state, what I'd like to have happen is that E steady state is zero. Now if you consider a different example, and I'll switch back to black, where I'm going to set r equal to zero. So no input in R. But let's say along comes a disturbance W at some time. Boom, maybe a step. So there's W. What I'd like Y to do is still track R, and R is 0. So what I'd like Y to do is to really just sit there at 0. And here's Y in green. Maybe it's coming along 0 and very nicely. But when the step comes in the disturbance, it bounces up a little bit and then comes back down to zero. That would be okay. There's a little bit of transient in y, but it comes back to zero. Again, e is equal to r minus y. In this case, r was zero. And in steady state, again, we would like the steady state value of the error to be zero, regardless of that step in or um, regardless of that step disturbance input. So that's the general idea of what we're doing here. We're going to come up with a way to determine if the disturbance rejection properties, that is, does the steady state error go back to zero when I have a step input in W, and also the step tracking characteristics. Does my steady state error go to zero when I give it some sort of a step input in R? To summarize then, here's how the analysis is going to go. For step disturbance rejection analysis, what we'll do is, that's rejection, what we'll do is we'll set R to 0, and we'll set W equal to a unit step, that's a step disturbance, and then we'll analyze the steady state error. So if the steady state error is 0, then we will say that it does have disturbance rejection properties, or at least step disturbance rejection. And for step tracking, we'll do something very similar. We'll set R equal to a unit step, so our reference input is a step. We'll set W equal to zero, because we don't want to confuse the issue with a disturbance at that point. And again, we'll look for, and I'll put a question mark up here, we'll look for the steady state error. And if it's zero, then we can say that we do have some level of step tracking. Certainly in steady state we're able to track a step. It turns out that the disturbance rejection analysis is a wee bit simpler than the step tracking analysis and the reason for that is in both cases E is equal to R minus Y. A common mistake is to, is to use E equal W minus Y for the disturbance rejection, but you don't. It's the reference minus the output, R minus Y. And for the disturbance rejection case, R is equal to zero. So E is just equal to negative Y, and that's why the analysis is typically a little bit easier when you're doing step disturbance rejection, as opposed to step tracking, where you actually have to set R equal to 1 over S, times y.
or I should say minus y. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take another look at that black diagram and write out an expression for y in terms of the two inputs r and w. Once we have that, we'll just go ahead and do an example where we actually plug in some values for d, g, and l and go through the analysis. Then I think we'll just whip up a quick, quick Simulink simulation and confirm the results that we get uh, by hand. So let's go back to this black diagram again. And we'll spend just a couple minutes playing around with it. Here we go. Put an L there. These are all transfer functions, of course. And this is y. So the transfer function between y and r is pretty straightforward. Um, we could set w equal to 0 and then write y over r as dg over 1 plus dgl. Great. Now, to get the other transfer function, that is to get y over w, then what we do is set r equal to 0 and maybe rearrange this black diagram a little bit. So one way we could do it is go like this. We could, if we set r equal to 0, we could put w there. Then we'll get g. Here's our y. And then back through here, we get l and d. And I'll zip it in there like so. And now once we write it like that, we can see that y over w is equal to g over 1 plus dgl. So now what we can do is combine these two results and do the following. We could write y is equal to dg over 1 plus dgl r plus g over 1 plus dgl times w. Now we can get the same result using a slightly different way and I'll just show you that real quick just because some folks find this approach more satisfying for this type of problem. So here's our black diagram again. And what we'll do is we'll just pass a signal right through this forward path, right through there. And we'll just sort of keep track of the signal as we do that. So we start here, we get r. When we get to this point, we have r minus l times y. It passes through d. So now we're here. We could add w to that, or we must add w to that. And then we multiply by g. That puts us here. And lo and behold, that's equal to y. If I multiply out this left-hand side, I get d, g, r minus d, g, l, y plus g, w, y, or g, w equals y. I can bring that y over to this side and divide through by 1 plus d, g, l, and I get exactly what? we derived a minute ago. Beautiful. So it's just an alternate way of getting the same thing. Okay, so now we have this nice expression for y in terms of our two inputs r and w. And we'll just go ahead and do an example where we analyze a system's disturbance rejection and step tracking performance. And again, this is all steady state behaviors. So let's do this. For our d, we'll put in a 4s plus 1 over s plus 2. That's a beautiful looking controller. And for our plant, we'll just do something really simple. Just 3 over s. Here's our disturbance. And let's just use unity feedback. So there's our black diagram. 
we can go ahead and generate the transfer function or the y uh, the two transfer functions y over r and y over w but I'll write it like this so let's see this one would be 4s plus 1 3 over s s plus 2 divided by y or 1 plus that whole expression 4s plus 1 over s s plus 2 and that's this one and for the next one we get 3 over s over the same denominator 4s plus 1 over s s plus 2 and this is the w expression go ahead and simplify that and we'll get a 3 4s plus 1 divided by let's see a squared plus 14s plus 3 r plus 3 we'll pick up an s plus 2 and over that same denominator of course the denominators are always the same um, oops that's a 3 not a 13 there we go um, which makes perfect sense Okay, maybe we'll put a box around that because it's kind of important. Okay, well, let's do the step disturbance rejection first because I said that one is a little bit easier. So let's do this disturbance rejection. And to do the disturbance rejection, what we'll do is we'll set R equal to 0 and W equal to 1 over S. So let's see, I'll get y is equal to 3s plus 2 over s squared plus 14s plus 3 times 1 over s. And I have to form e equals r minus y, but r is equal to 0, so this is just negative y. So this is negative 3s plus 2 over s s squared plus 14 s plus 3 not too bad and now all I have to do is investigate the steady state error so I could use the final value theorem and say the steady state error is equal to the limit as s goes to 0 of s times e which would be negative 3 over s plus 2 over s squared plus 14 s plus 3 now I can only do this as long as all the poles of s times e of s are in the left half plane. Well, the poles of s times e of s are the roots of that characteristic equation. And they are in the left half plane. You could go ahead and use the quadratic formula or any root solver and you would find that to be true. So we can go ahead and do this. And what do we get? Let's see, we get a steady state error of negative 3 times 2 over 3, so we get negative 2. Well, unfortunately, this system does not have great steady state dis step disturbance rejection properties. If we come along and give this system a step input in W at some point, the steady state error goes to negative 2. Y does not go back to 0, right? Because in this case, R, let's say R is in red, is sitting here at 0. It means we're telling the system to stay at 0, but then along comes a disturbance in W, a step input. What we'd like to have happen is the output y to maybe respond to that disturbance. That's pretty hard not to do, but then to come back down to zero, but it doesn't. Instead, the steady state error goes to negative two. That is, y actually goes up to two, right? Because e is equal to r minus y, r is zero, and, and the steady state error is negative two, so we end up going from y goes up to two. So y is probably sitting here at 0, and then it goes bloop, up to 2. Well, that's too bad. But it is what it is. And so now let's go ahead and look at the step tracking characteristics.
So for step tracking, and again it's a steady state error kind of a thing, we're going to go ahead and let r equal 1 over s and w equal 0. And again we'll look at the error. Error is always equal to r minus y. And so in this case it's 1 over s minus Let's see, our y was 3, 4s plus 1, over that same denominator, times 1 over s, the input r. Now, before going ahead and doing the final value theorem, I've got to write this as a rational function. I have to write this as a polynomial in s in the numerator divided by a polynomial in s that is a polynomial in s in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. I need to get a common denominator here. So if I cross multiply, I'll get this minus 3, 4s plus 1 all over s, s squared plus 14s plus 3. Multiply this out, and I'll get an s squared plus 2s and look, a beautiful thing happens. That 3 cancels with that 3, and so I get this. And again, before I can apply the final value theorem, I have to simplify this as much as I can, canceling out any extra s's in the numerator and denominator. And so I get that. And now, the steady state error is the limit as s goes to 0 of s times e, or this, oops, the limit as s goes to 0 of this, and guess what? I get 0. The steady state error is 0. So it means that if I hit this system with a step input, my output y actually eventually gets up to that same value of that step input, and the steady state error is gone, is zero. And so this does have step tracking performance, at least in steady state. Certainly there'll be a transient associated with it. But eventually, the output y will achieve the reference input r. So now we have a couple results, just to summarize. We know that, um, according to our analysis, that there should be some pretty good step tracking performance, but rather poor step disturbance rejection properties. So let's go ahead into MATLAB, make a quick simulation of this in Simulink, and take a look at it. Okay, so here I have Simulink open, and I'll just do this from scratch. It's a strange expression, but I'll just start with a new model. And let's see, I'll minimize this, and I'll need to have my palette of goodies up. Okay, so let's see, I'll go over here to continuous, and we'll need a couple transfer functions, so I'll just grab this. And let's see, the controller transfer function was a 4 and a 1 in the numerator, and a 1 and a 2 in the denominator. That looks about right. Just right click and drag to copy that. And I'll give myself a little extra space. And this thing was equal to 3 over s. There we go. And now if I go into math, I can grab a summing block. I'll need a couple of those, so I'll right click and drag. And I'll connect up a few things. Like so. There's our output. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's scooch around a bit. Okay. And what I'll do for my sources, I'll grab a step and I'll put it into both inputs. Now if I double click on this step, I can see it's going to start at 1, initial value of 0 and a final value of 1. That looks fine. And I'll use this one for r, oops, that's my reference, put it right there, I'll grab this, bring it back into here, flip that sign, if I don't flip the sign it'll be quite unstable, and pop
pop that right into there. But I'm going to do one more thing. If I go into math, I'll grab a gain. And the reason for the gain is just so I can have a little bit of visibility in terms of turning on and off the step in the disturbance. So if I set this to 1, my step reference input will be on. But if I just go in here and set it to 0, it'll be off. And that way I can just quickly see it. Okay, I'm just going to grab these two things, right click, drag, drop them into here, rename this W, and let's see, the last thing I need to do is grab a scope. So from the sinks, I'll grab a scope, and let's see, I'll probably want to look at that output Y, yeah, that should be good. I'll double click on this and just name it Y. There's my output. That looks pretty good. I guess if I wanted to be fancy about this, I could name this one the controller and this the plant. Okay, I'm going to go into the configuration uh, parameters and Let's see, step time, or uh, simulation, let's go for 20 seconds. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back into here. I'd really like to use a fixed step size, just so that there's no uncertainty in um, what happens with the updating of the system. And I chose a time step of, um, integration time step of 0 0.01, using a first order integration method, Euler integration. And that should be sufficient to accurately simulate this system. Uh, let's go with a reference input of 1. And let it rip. And look at that. It's a little small, so let me blow it up. Oops. Let me blow it up that way. Okay, so we just put a step into the reference input of 1, nothing in the disturbance, and look at what we got. At time equal 1, it jumps up, and it gets up to 1. So the output Y achieved the reference input exactly like we thought it would. It has very good steady state step tracking characteristics. Now let's go ahead and set this to 0, and let it rip with a Step disturbance. Boom. Ugh. That's not good. What we would have liked to have seen if it had good step disturbance rejection properties, we might see a little transient here and then have it come back to zero. Right? Because the reference input is zero at this point. So we would like the output to go to zero. But alas, the output went up to two in response to that step input. Rather sad. Now, let's just do a little foreshadowing of what we'll learn about when we look at system type. Let's go ahead and change the plant a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another pole at the origin. I'm going to make this 3 over s squared. And we'll do a couple things. We'll make this a 1. So we're doing nothing with our disturbance input, but we're putting in a step input in the uh, reference input, and we'll run it. Okay, so now we have a little bit different response. It's a little oscillatory, but again, it gets to 1. So it still has very good steady state step tracking characteristics. Now we'll flip this around. We'll have 0 for the reference input, and 1 for the disturbance input, and we'll run that case. And look at that. It still has rather poor step disturbance rejection properties. Now that was by adding an extra pole in the plant. Let me take away that pole now. Go back to what we had, but now I'm going to put an extra pole here in the controller. And let's do our disturbance again. 
so nothing in the reference input but a step in the disturbance. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So now instead of going up to 2 and having poor disturbance rejection properties, the uh, output y goes back, back to 0. So we get a little transient due to the step disturbance. Keep in mind there's still a step all the way through here at 1. And yet the system rejects that step and drives the output back down to the reference input, which in this case is 0. So now it has good disturbance disturbance rejection properties in steady state simply by adding another pole to the controller a pole at the origin in particular and just to make sure that we didn't do anything to disturb our reference tracking abilities let's run that case one more time still looks good so to summarize just introduce the concepts of steady state, step disturbance, rejection, and step tracking performance characteristics. And then to find a way to analyze that by looking at the steady state error. In both cases, you look at the steady state error. The disturbance rejection analysis is usually a little bit easier than the tracking analysis just because the reference input in the disturbance rejection case is zero. So it requires us to do a little bit less math. And then after we came up with the way of analyzing those systems, we just looked at an example. And in Simulink, the results matched exactly what we saw on paper. And then as a final little bonus, we looked at adding an extra pole at the origin to both the plant and the controller. And lo and behold, adding it to the control law improved our disturbance rejection performance. And we'll see why that is when we look into system type. Again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.